Okay, so the dude that got outed, his name is Mike Jeffries, the CEO of um, Abercrombie and Fitch. Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm like, what is that shit? No, some some fashion, the fashion industry. I was actually talking about it right when I did the critique on that Trump and Ashton thing. I go, these guys are a fake crusade, right? Because they go after nothing. Um, and I said, like, are you in the fashion industry looking at something? It's so funny because I threw that out there, but I had no idea, like, these people were doing this at all. It just didn't occur to me that this could be on the fashion industry, but they did the right thing. They did the right thing because there's male victims in this one, but I think there's both because I just pulled up another story from 2006 of this guy. Yeah, January 2006 on Salon. Salon, you need to get your shit together. Like, what the hell? They posted this, right? So they did this long story on him, raving over him. Like, wow, you know, he's the greatest thing ever. And I don't know if this is a dude writing it. Yes, okay. It's a white dude. Yeah, you wouldn't see anything wrong with this dude. Uh, they wrote this, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, you, you, this is totally normal. Okay. I told you there's a bunch of pervs up in here. They were like, you need to get used to getting naked in front of all these guys, you know, when I was like, you know, a teen. And at least at that time, I just turned barely legal, but the other girls were not. <laughs> okay, so then in that way, the brand is like its creator. While Jeffries wears A and F clothes, the uniform doesn't succeed in making him seem boyish or particularly masculine. And for a man obsessed with creating a sexy and emotional experience for his customers, Jeffrey comes off as oddly asexual. He is touchy-feely with some of his employees, both male and female, but the touch is decidedly paternal. I cannot believe this. See, 2006, I told you they were blaming me for my rape. Here, they're just, like, overlooking that the guy is touching everybody, okay? I mean, everybody. Remarkably, little is known about Jeffrey's personal life. <laughs> That's a scary thing, right? <laughs> so it says, there are a few people who claim to know Jeffrey's well, and those who do wouldn't comment for this story. <laughs> Let me keep it together, keep it together, okay. There are a few people who claim to know Jeffries well, and those who do wouldn't comment for this story. What is known is that Jeffries has a grown son. Here we go. We have rapist dad. But he lives separately from his wife. Okay, so he lives separately from his wife. Um, yeah, hopefully he's away from dad. I don't know. According to Business Week, it has a Herb Ritz photo of a toned male torso hanging on the fireplace in his bedroom. I would probably be creeped out by that. But anyway, yeah, so you're an object, right? You don't, we don't want your head. We don't want, you know, any other part of your body, just a torso. <laughs> okay, not creepy at all. Okay, Jeffries wouldn't discuss any of that with me. And fidgety, nervously, and grew visibly agitated when I asked about several of his many controversies and lawsuits that he had weathered in his 14 years at the helm of ANF. Our first bump came in when I mentioned the 2002 uproar over the company's thongs of middle school girls, which had eye candy and wink printed on the fronts. Yeah, I don't mind the thong part because I needed the thongs for some of the clothes things that I wore. But like when you think about this, it's kind of like, why would you have eye candy on a little kid's underwear? You know what I mean? It'd be more appropriate like fucking a heart or something. You know what I mean? Just something else. But anyway, and wink, wink. I don't know. The wink. I don't know, dude. Printed on their fronts. So this was a bunch of bullshit, he said. Sweating profusely. Oh my god, this is hilarious. He's like, I'm getting outed as a total pedophile. Yeah, but this is for little girls, you guys. People said we were cynical, that we were sexualizing little girls. But you know what? I still think those are cute underwear for little girls. And, oh god. And I think anybody who gets on the bag bandwagon about thongs for little girls is crazy. No, it's not the thong part. 
It's not the thong part. It's probably, it's the, I think the eye candy, that whole thing right there is a little, um, no, no. Um, it's nuts, but I can see getting upset about letting your girl hang out with a bunch of old pervs. But why would you let your girl hang out with a bunch of old pervs? It's like, um, so what? Yeah, here, here they're blaming parents for you being an old pervert. Okay, an old pedophile. We shouldn't use the word pervert, really. It's just they're pedophile rapists, but, um... Okay. Later, I brought up the Baraha surrounding the ANF quarterly, which, until it was discontinued in 2003, boasted articles about the history of orgies and pictures of chiseled, mostly white, all-American boys and girls but mostly boys, uh, naked on horses, beaches, pianos, surfboards, statues, and phallic suggested tree trunks. The Magalog so outraged the American Decency Association that it called for a boycott and started selling anti, uh, I, their t-shirts, right? Uh, ditch, fitch, uh, pedals, porn, and exploits children. Meanwhile, gay men across America were eagerly collecting the magazines, Lured by photographer Bruce Web Weber's uh, taste for beautiful masculine boys playfully play pulling off each other's boxers. Okay. Yeah, so here's the world of pedophile men and their young boys and how... Okay, okay. Jeffries nearly fell over an e e expiration. So they were doing it. See, here's a thing where they were doing it in that area where they were calling the gray area. And it's like, do you guys see there's really isn't a gray area? It's like, who the hell wants to see naked kid? You know what I mean? It's kind of peddling to these guys right here, legally. Jeffries nearly fell over in exasperation when I mentioned the Magalog, although I'm not sure which changed that. He sells sex to kids or that he advertises, advertising and homoerotic bothered him more. That's just so wrong. I think that what we represent sexuality is healthy. It's playful. It's not dark. It's not degrading. And it's not gay. And it's not straight. And it's not black. It's not white. Um, but we have age limits here, okay? So I was like, everything needs to have consent. And you should not be having children. So I don't, you know, whatever I miss sort of this portion of life. For example, when I asked him how important sex and sexual attraction are and what he calls the emotional experience he creates for his customer. He says, it's almost everything. That's why we hire good looking people in our stores. <laughs> wow. Because good looking people attract other good looking people. And we want to market to cool, good looking people. We don't market to anyone other than that. Wow. Um, we could tell he's a major sociopath here. Okay. He's just like, this is the narcissist thing that it's like, okay. This guy's ugly as fuck. Okay, let's just be honest. Good looking to who? You you line some guys up, I'll tell you who's good looking. It's not gonna be that many. So, okay, so it says, as far as Jeffries is concerned, America's unattractive, overweight, or, oh, wow, okay. Uh, overweight or otherwise undesirable teens can shop elsewhere. Fuck, dude, what the hell? Socio, man, that shit, that, that's, that's evil. That, that's really evil. It's like, but look at him. Can we take a closer look at this guy's fucking face? Holy fuck, dude. It's the ogre. It's the beast. It's the beast that they go, you gotta learn to love him. It's like, no, we're not learning to love nothing. And you could call it hate speech. I hate him. I hate him. He's disgusting. That's what I'm saying. The dude don't even have a mirror. Like, why is he talking like that? Because he's got something wrong with his head. And Ralph Lauren has a little girl <laughs> in a picture. A little Indian girl in a picture next to a bed. Okay. In a teepee. All these guys were pedophiles, dude. I'm telling you. I go, when I... Well, look back at this. I go, yeah, I, yeah, there was stuff, man. I was like, I'm not going to get used to just stripping down in front of these guys. Like, why are you guys telling me to do that kind of shit? You could fucking put a curtain. What the fuck is your problem? You know, like, 
In every school, there are cool and popular kids, and when there are the not-so-cool kids, and candidly, we go after the cool kids, so we go after the attractive all-American kid with a great attitude and a lot of friends. Oh, the sociopath bully kid, okay. Yeah, with the loony fucking Christian parents that bullies all the other kids in school, uh-huh, and rich parents, and they trash poor kids and everything else. Yeah, that's the ones you want. Okay. So at least you know your market. Yeah, the assholes. Okay, so it says a lot of people don't belong in our clothes, and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. These companies are in trouble and are trying to target everybody. Young, old, fat, skinny, but then you become totally vanilla. There's no such thing as vanilla, by the way. Okay, so you don't alienate anybody, but you don't excite anybody either. Straight socio, man. This guy, oh, uh, I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I was like, Jeffrey's obsession with building brands began when he was five. So he was already thinking of children and being with kids at five. Probably. Somebody molested him. He grew up in L.A. where his father owned a chain of party supply stores, which a young Jeffrey's liked to organize and design the window and counters. I would always say to my parents, we need another store. We need another. And I always wanted to expand and get bigger. And I would get off on saying, why do we do the fixtures like this? Why don't we do it another way? And that totally turned me on. Yeah. Oh, trying to tell people what to do. But you need, there's, see, so it skips here because it's probably like, and then my dad used to touch me in the back room and then he would beat me. Yeah. There's some portion right there we're missing. Okay, Jeffrey says that he had a very classic Amer he had a very classic American youth, although he was not good at sports. I broke my dad's heart because I wasn't good at basketball. Yeah, so the dad's all mad. He's like, you're not a boy's boy, man. You suck. You can't even play sports, you little shit. He's like, in high school in the late 50s, Jeffrey's wore Levi's. And actually, don't write that. He laughs. And so, but Levi's was definitely the uniform back then. Kind of like what a &F has become. If you didn't wear 501s, you weren't considered weird. Actually, guess... Uh, well, that's in the 50s. Okay, yeah. So, no one cool wore a &F when Jeffries went to Claremont McKenna College in the Columbia University, and he earned a master's. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then the company's best years were behind it. Founded in 1892. It's heyday. Um... Okay, who cares about that? Okay, then. Oh, okay, so it says, maybe it's just the price of success, but it's not It's not a normal day in America if somebody isn't suing or boycotting or girl calling a and F, which has become a lightning rod for both the left and the right. They, I hate these type of people. I really do. I, I mean, I, I loathe them. In 2004, A&F paid $40 million in settle action suits brought by minority employees. So you already heard him talk at the beginning, right? Where he's like, I only hire attractive people. And those are the only people that should be seen, right? That stupid son of a bitch. So you already know his character. So you know this suit was totally true, right? He's like, suit brought by min minority employees who said they were either denied employment because they're not the good looking people he wants and are forced to work in back rooms so they don't be seen, okay? Because they're the shitty people. They're not the popular kids, okay? So where they wouldn't be seen by customers. Fuck yeah, that dude did that. He's like, well, a &F denied any wrongdoing. Jeffrey said the suit taught him a lesson. I don't think we were in any sense guilty of racism. Um, but I think that we just didn't work hard enough as a company to create a more balance and diversity. Uh, but you just said this other thing right before this paragraph, so you're full of shit, you're a sociopath, and you won't take accountability that you're a fucking piece of shit racist son of a bitch. And we have, and I think that made us better company. We have minority recruiters, um, and if you go into our stores, you see great looking kids of all races. Um, I feel sorry for anybody that actually wants to work for this company like wants to work for this company i would assume and be done with that like you wouldn't want to help this guy anything gentlemen prefer to old biddies do you 
Do I make you look fat? Who needs a brain when you have these? Yeah, they're offensive. It's not even like funny humor. It's like saying I could be dumb, but I have tits. A gentleman prefer like big tits. Do I make you look fat? Ooh, the narcissist. I hate this shit. They were big time bullies. So th I, this was promoted in the culture mostly in 2006. Nope. So she is. I'm like, so she is. I say. Like, um, has a history of insensitivity. Uh, they have a history of being a sociopath. Like, just, oh, these are just jokes, you know. We're making fun of fat people. Women are dumb. We should only pay attention to their tits. Like, what the fuck? And then so all the women got breast implants for, like, no fuck reason. You know what I mean? There was a whole thing going on here where it's just like, why are you guys really doing that? You know what I mean? It was, like, really put on the table. You know, it's just like, you wouldn't do it if it wasn't put in your face like somehow you should have that because you weren't born that way and so you know what i mean and thankfully like a lot of people are getting that shit removed it's, i don't i don't know what the thing is today like i have people are still doing that but uh, i mean to the extent that they were back here i mean you do you and I could see in cases where they would do that, like you had breast cancer or something like that. I mean, whatever the case may be. Um, but um, generally, the society is hella fucked in the head. Mostly women, dude. I was like, this is from sociopath men. And then it's like they're promoting that that's your worth right there. And it's not even a funny joke. Like, you know, we can make our own jokes about those things. But this is like really kind of like degrading on you from men. That's kind of the difference of that. So, um, these, there are kids starving themselves so they could be the, uh, fucking Habercrobe girl. And there are guys who think they aren't worthy if they don't look exactly like the guys on the wall. Oh, I'll tell you, if you probably did, I would say that you're probably a socio too. I mean, and you have no self-esteem and you'll end up taking it out on me, so... You know, I don't know. Um, listen, do we go too far sometimes? Absolutely. But we push the envelope. But you're not doing it in a good way. See, when I do stuff, when I push the boundaries of anything, it's to kind of forward humanity into a better place, not to push us right into the, where you should go into prison. Okay, so that's a different thing. And we keep pushing stuff to harm everybody, and so everybody gets an eating disorder, and we rape everybody, and we're just sociopath, antisocial behavior right here. Totally. And so we try to stay authentic and relevant to our target customer, the piece of shit socio. Yeah, I really don't care what anyone other than our target customer thinks. There was more mannequin fixing at the a &F store where, went, where a male one decked out in jeans wasn't looking very manly. He wasn't looking very manly. What does this look? We have to fix this guy's package. We could stuff him. A girl suggested while a guy fiddling with the crotch trying to make it look poofier. Make it poofier. Would that fix Jeffrey's turn? <laughs> So you have to fake it like every other guy, right? Um, Jeffrey's turned to a male mannequin. I need to behave. Okay, Jeffrey's turned to a male mannequin in cargo pants to make sure it looks realistic. Um, well, no, to make it look realistic, then you don't poof it out, right? Um, wait, he had a very attractive male employee put on the on the pair of the pants and stand next to the mannequin. That looks great, he said, and the young man did a 360 and the pants sagging off his ass. Jeffries looked at the mannequin again. Are the pants low enough? The guy's got to lower. They're right off the end. They're off at the edge of falling off, said the assistant. He's like, okay, that's good, Jeffries. Let the, let's get them as low as we can without them falling off. We don't want him looking like an old guy. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, this guy's like the biggest red flag ever. Not surprised. I, you know, it's funny. I 
I was never into, like, these big, like, designer brands. Like, there was a couple. Like, I had, like, Prada. Like, Prada had some kind of cool stuff. And then, for some reason, I really got into Ralph Lauren at some point because of this more, like, distressed, kind of casual kind of thing going on there for a hot minute right and then i wasn't paying attention to that indian stuff but i i was i wasn't like i didn't hate it like i just didn't think about it at the time and then when it was put forward to me in the more recent years i was like holy crap i just never thought about it so it's my own ignorance about it but i just nothing would have me think about it and yeah, so no, I, I would never support those people again. And they've all been disgusting. All these main fashion people, like Nygaard's running a human trafficking ring. This dude's running a little boy human trafficking ring or something going on here. I haven't seen the thing yet, right? It came on today, but I haven't seen it yet. And then um, a whole bunch of them. There was a whole bunch of designers, all these men. And... No, this fashion industry is disgusting. Like, they push the, the anorexic thing. Uh, it's the men. It's the men because they're the ones that made that criteria. And then now you're hearing all the models coming out with the million bad stories about everything. Like, how it actually was really bad and they were passing out. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, me, I'm thinking you know, I have to work harder to get to that. And basically everybody just had an eating disorder. And, you know, they were telling me, you know, things like 120 is too heavy. And so they were basically trying to get me like way down. And it's like, I'm naturally not like bone thin. I'm just not. And why do I need to be? Because I fit the average person right and even when i was overweight then i fit the clan of those people right and the, the group of those people and so and i'm not ugly and they were saying that they're like we can use you for print work because you're not tall enough for the runway so i could do print work and then um maybe things like if they had a, a show at like the mall and they were doing a jc pennies thing i don't know i'm just throwing something out there because they did a lot of those things too like these local things or if you've seen the nygaard thing where they had just a ton of people walking down in a room just trying to show off the clothes on average i think there were some average looking people i he just got a whole bunch of people walking you know through this thing so yeah you can end up being involved in some things like that too but uh, you, they, you wouldn't have fit that supermodel thing that they were trying to do right there. But those people are unhealthy, dude. That, that whole industry was really bad. And then, yeah, and I said, you know, out of luck, you know, I lost the address of going to that guy's thing. And then when I went in later, that guy was fucking creepy as hell. And so luckily, luckily, it kind of fell apart, actually. Like, at the time, I was so upset about it. But I was looking back at it going, oh, that's all I needed is more perpetrators and more bad stories. Because it would just be layered on the already bad that's here, you know. So, um, yeah, no, and I and it would have been worse for my eating disorder because I eventually got over that, right? Like, I had worked really hard to uh, correct that issue, but it would have made it, it would have, mm-mm. If they started like putting me out on work and I and that was really like I had to always be that way it would have been it would have been unhealthy and all fuck it which ways you know it was already bad working on television with that but um it would be worse when you're doing the fashion side of things uh -uh. and I still felt like I would be better in the background of, of the the doing other stuff in the fashion industry um versus being the one i'm more of the designer so that's the thing about it is that that was my thing in school was the designing versus me walking down a catwalk um you know i kind of had this like thing like i wanted to be this crazy ass designer and design all this these these clothes and stuff but i didn't realize all the different other things that go into that industry and creating that stuff and I started learning about that in, in the past some odd years now. But um, yeah, no, there was a lot of other opportunities for it. And the school 
cost too much and then they uh nobody would help me pay for it so i didn't end up going to the school for it i wanted to go to the school for it they sent me to modeling school but they wouldn't send me to the other school which is actually where they were promising entryway into other jobs in that industry and so i wanted that on the side because i wanted to design my own clothes as a artist too you know singing and stuff and doing my stage clothes i had an interest in that and I had almost hired uh, the designer, or the one that did Ozzy's um, fucking, uh, what was it? It was that big silver thing that he wore a long time ago. And so, yeah, I had an interest in wanting to design like that and for other people like that, if anybody knew that. Anyway, that was in my background. He opened talking like this. He's kind of like, I'm a rapist and fuck you. I look at children sexually and whatnot. And then, you know guy's ugly who what he, how come he going on like this he that's his way i guess he's like i want all the hot kids around me because i was the most nerdiest ugliest piece of shit in school so i'm gonna trash everybody that looked like me and then um you know and i could lure all the good looking young boys to me i guess like what the fuck is that he's such a snot like create that culture of people being so shitty to me okay my daily mail is on it what do they say here it's basically a human trafficking run because it's just like highly organized network used a middleman to find young men for businessman mike jeffries 79 and matthew smith 60 um it said it's spoken to eight men and some who allege that they were exploited at events and places including u.s london paris venice um marrakesh and the caribbean and it said the events involved sex acts and said and the men said that they were actually recruited by a middleman identified as james jacobson who denied any wrongdoing mr jacobson wore a snakeskin patch over his nose where he had surgery had gone wrong oh my god where's this picture oh my god let me see this it's like a michael jackson moment wait um ha wait half claim that they were misled about the nature of the events or not told sex was expected while others said they knew it would involve sex but not exactly what was expected of them well Here's the thing, guys. Men have been saying this about us, that we should know it involves sex, like coming to here, you know, to do music stuff, which we did not because we were kids. And I don't know how old you guys were because they're not saying ages. But, okay, so um, I'm not blaming you guys. I'm saying they've been blaming us for this shit. So they would naturally blame boys for it too, right? Modeling opportunities with A&F were said to have been raised before they met Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith. Bradbury, then 23, uh, said he was introduced to Mr. Jacobson's by an agent who described him as the gatekeeper to the owners of a and Ew, 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 ew. No, that guy's so ugly. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That guy does have a snakeskin pouch. What the fuck? The men said they were actually recruited by a middleman identified as James Jacobson who denied any wrongdoing. Oh, my God. He looks like <laughs> so they like the scarecrow from wizard of oz or something i don't he told reporters re, reporter rihanna crow for wait croxford mr jacobson suggested bruce weber who at the time was anf's official photographer should take his picture oh goodness it's like a half thing right it's a half thing Mr. Bradbury claimed, Jim made it clear to me that unless I let him perform oral sex on me, that I would not be meeting with the A&F or Mr. Jeffries. I was paralyzed. It was like he was selling fame and the price was compliance. That's all men, right? We've been saying, we've been saying these men be calling us liars. I go, all these men up in here are rapists. I was like... Mr. Bradbury said he had been made to believe this is where everybody gets their start. Pretty much. Okay, Mr. Jacobson is a... See, I didn't do it, right? What happened to me? I didn't do this stuff, right? What happened to me? So, it's there's a truth to that. The people that complied, regardless if it was against their... You know, they didn't want to or against their will. They got in. 
So it says, Mr. Jacobson is alleged to have given him $500 and told him it was for his time. <laughs> wow. I told you these gay guys, oh my God, they pay, they have more worth for these guys, right? The men get more money. If this was a woman, he'd go, here's $20. Yeah. Okay. Or nothing. And he said, I thought he was just creepy old dude that I wouldn't have to see again. He accepted an invitation to a daytime event at Mr. Jeffrey's former home in the Hamptons on New York's Long Island, recently sold for $29 million. Mr. Bradbury said he understood Mike Jeffries was a powerful man who could make his career. So men do the same thing, right? Like there's the same thing going on. And these are the guys that want, see, all the rich guys are the ones that are like, we're going to start a human trafficking ring. I can pick and choose any person I want. And I'm going to treat you as an object and um, I'm going to force you to have sex with me. And if you won't, then you can get out of my life. Like they're sociopaths. They're straight up. All these rich guys. Yeah. Ahead of the event, he said he was given an a and gift card to buy an outfit, which he said made it feel legitimate and official. At the Hamptons, Mr. Bradbury said he spoke to Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith about his aspirations to be an a and model. Later, he said Mr. Jeffries held poppers under his nose. Oh, my God. Wait, this isn't the popper guy, is it? I had a popper guy. I, I can't talk about really on here, but there was this dude that I swear he, like, he had a lot of money, and then he would go off doing poppers, and it was the most hilarious thing i ever seen in my life, because I've never seen that before. And the dude, like, wouldn't stop, and then he'd had all that shit, like, running down his mouth and he went on like this all night long to the next day and then god knows what he did what he does he probably owns a big company that's what i'm saying it goes the craziest shit i didn't even i've never heard of poppers and they were saying oh a lot of gay guys do that shit i was like yeah i don't know what the fuck but and then i heard bet midler bring it up i think it was the popper thing where geraldo was doing poppers I was like, what the fuck is a popper? I just know this guy like did set and he sniffed it or something. And there was all this goo, like this shit on his face. But it was the funniest thing. To, I know I'm terrible, but I thought it was hilarious. I was like, what the fuck? But they're not so out of it where it's like, uh, like they'd be on crack or something like that. It's just they're, they're ridiculously like high in some weird way like i don't know how to explain it but what the fuck but anyway it is a major like a lot of gay guys like to do it okay so anyway i never done them i never done them i just seen somebody doing them i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah so this is a drug which can cause strong head rushes and disorientation and later had sex with them yeah it's like some weird thing like that it's not the same as if you see somebody high on meth and, and yeah, I mean, I don't even know if you could even die from that. I mean, I'm all laughing over here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> wait. So then, um, okay. So Brett Powell, a formal model turned life coach and activist. And so he felt pressured into attending an event at the Hamptons in 2011. Okay. Men who attended these events told BBC they involved Mike Jeffries and Matthew Smith engaging in sexual activity with about four men or directing them to have sex with each other. Afterwards, the men said they were given envelopes filled with thousands of dollars in cash. I told you, dude, these gay men get so much money, it is unreal. Like, because they have more... Re not that they really even respect these guys, but they, for some reason, have more worth for men than any woman. Like, they wouldn't even be going on this much with them. Uh, the women would get half of what they got. I'm like, to be serious. I kept hearing these stories about it. I go, fuck, dude. These dudes be getting like 10 grand just for showing up, you know? And then like a girl comes and are like, mm, give her $600. Yeah, totally. He's like, according to the BBC, Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith did not respond to repeated requests for comment. But Jacob said that all the men went to, into these events with their eyes wide open. The BBC said that the two former uh, U.S. prosecutors had independently reviewed documents and testimony and called for an investigation to determine whether the charges for sex trafficking should be brought. Fuck yeah, they should be. But the same thing with the Playboy thing and all these other guys and Corey Feldman with this fucking ring over there getting girls like that. All these guys have been doing it like this is normal. We all do this. There's no big deal. 
Under the U.S., uh, sex trafficking includes getting an adult to travel to another state or country to have sex for money by using force, fraud, or coercion. Okay, but I'm a child, and some guy got me across the state of California um, for uh, under coercion and fraud. It was a fraud. It says fraud, right? So, um, yeah, but it shouldn't be to another state. Are you fucking kidding me? California is the size of three, four, four or five fucking states long. So somebody gets me across the state, a kid. Uh, yeah. So they need to fix that, by the way. It shouldn't even need to change from that. It was an eight hour away from my fucking home. We're talking three to four hundred miles away from my fucking home. That's a long way uh, for a kid. And it was that thing right there. So why would they brush it off, right? There was a thing to that. Yeah, it's all human trafficking. They were trying to argue with me. I was like, no, you're the ones that want to make raping little girls legal and doing this to guys too because they didn't consider, you know, men can be raped, right? That was the whole thing because we all rape our sons, right? Yeah, we've been getting those stories. So it says other allegations on the Panorama special, uh, the guys, the dark side of the cool inside recruiters, the men would get between 500 and 1,000 each uh, for each one, Mr. Jacobson is accused of propositioning or sexually auditioning them by requesting or offering to perform oral sex before introduced, being introduced to Mr. Jeffries. Yeah, that's why all these guys got in the industry. They're like, yeah, we got, uh, you know, nonstop sex and blah, you know, all this crap. But this is what they're doing to get it. Ew. This ad is gross. It's like almost a naked guy, and it's all uh, A and F and um, Abercrombie kids. They put kids. The word kids underneath though is some guy's pants almost coming down. No wonder guys are like popping their shit out at me all the time. It says it is also claimed a personal groomer was hired to intimately shave body hair from men attending events and experience some described as dehumanizing others allegations are that men were required to sign non-disclosure agreements and understood that they would be sued if they spoke out see i would just ignore that i mean there's the three <laughs> mr jeffrey's personal staff who wore a and f uniforms um, are also said to have supervised the men, including in the bedroom, and handed them money afterwards. Like, dude, what the fuck? Uh, Barrett Paul, a former model turned life coach and activist, said he felt pressured into attending an event in the Hamptons in 2011. Then 22, he told BBC that he was recruited by an older model who received uh, a, fe a, a referral fee to be his replacement for some sort of sexual experience with the couple. He said the older model told him that you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, but suggested that the further you go, the better, and alluded to career opportunities when he arrived at the event. The staff supervising, he felt under pressure to perform. How was I going to leave? I didn't have a car. I had a chaperone sitting and watching me. And Mr. Paul said that one of the other men recruited for the event performed oral sex on him as Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith watched. And he said they encouraged him to come over to the bed and kiss Mr. Jeffries. And he added later two other men recruited for the event had sex with a and F bosses and his partner. At one point, he said Jeffries was behind him groping him. <sighs> Uh, dude, okay, Brad Edwards, a civil lawyer who the BBC had examined the evidence, said U.S. prosecutors should investigate whether what these brave men described could be sex trafficking. Fuck yeah, it is! It is in California, too, and they need to fucking do the same thing. Why are they okaying this conduct? Is what I'm saying. I go, they got a kid literally eight hours away. I mean, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So you're reading this here, but then the same thing with Playboy, right? And the reason why they okayed the Playboy thing is because all, they were, they're all rapists. They're all rapists and they don't want to look at that and go, look, my conduct is sex trafficking. Yeah. So all these guys, that shit, I told you I wanted to stay away from that whole thing. Because you knew, you knew, you knew some bullshit. You knew some bullshit. There may have been evidence of coercion uh, for some of the men, whereas others might not have felt the coer felt the coercive tactics. It still was, because there's still, this is the expectation, and it shouldn't be an expectation. 
Remember, a coercion is the reasonable belief that serious harm will be inflicted, and serious harm could be a be reputational harm, financial harm, physical harm. Coercion's like, you know, everybody's doing it. You're, you know, stop being a prude. You want it, and I'm gonna do this, and you know, I will give you this if you will do that. Yada yada yada. Coercion like that. That doesn't include harm. That doesn't include rep representational harm. It doesn't include financial harm. It doesn't include physical harm. Is that is that Mr. Paul? That's not true if you said that. No. I mean, there's more to it than that. Mr. Edwards also said Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith might argue the men were consenting adults and the fact that some had engaged in commercial sex in the past was a factor. Although he said past actions were really irrelevant to whether a particular commercial sex act was due to force, fraud, or coercion. Mr. Edwards said that there was a very high burden approved for prosecutors, however. We all got problems with sex, okay, because it doesn't matter what you do, even if you were a sex worker or anything like that, you still can be raped in those jobs, and consent is a factor, and coercing, and, you know, ex having the expectation of sex in order to ha gain entry anywhere is a no-go for any job, any job. Elizabeth Geddes, who was a federal prosecutor for more than 15 years, said there's certainly an argument that these young men were subjected to potential coercion. I think there are grounds for a prosecutor to open an investigation and look closely at this conduct to determine if a criminal prosecution is warranted. Mr. Jacobs, the middleman now age 70, said in a statement through his lawyer, then he took offense at suggestion of any coercive deception and or forceful behavior on my part and had no knowledge of any such conduct by others. He said that he did not recall making promises and modeling opportunities. Oh, you don't recall. <laughs> uh, yeah. An encounter I had was fully, any encounter I had was fully consensual. Now, we already know what consensual meant in 2006. Um, you know, the whole thing was, um, no means no. So it means that I'm going to offer this. And if you don't say no, it doesn't matter if I coerce you or force you or set you up, then it's consensual, right? Yeah. Cause you were rapist. And also I just read that he was touching everybody and they looked at it in a different way. No. Uh, -huh. and he says, everyone I came into contact with who attended these events went in with their eyes wide open. It's all your fault, guys. He will not take responsibility. He's a straight sociopath. Okay, here it is. It's all your guys' fault. Uh, nothing I do. Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Smith declined to comment. Okay. The a and spokesperson told Mail Online, We are appalled and disgusted by the behavior described in the allegations against Mr. Jeffries, whose employment with a &F ended in 2014, nearly 10 years ago. Well, he was pretty bad in 2006. Why did it take that long? Okay, speaking up and coming forward is not easy. And our thoughts are with those who bravely raise their voices. Since being contacted by the BBC, we have engaged in an outside law firm to conduct an independent investigation into the issues raised. The company's current executive leadership team and board of directors were not aware of the allegations of sexual misconduct by Mr. Jeffrey. Oh, well, I just read sent from 2006. He's pretty bad there. We're for kids, you know what I mean? What the fuck? So it says, for close to a decade, a new executive leadership team and refreshed board of directors have successfully transformed our brand and culture into the values-driven organization we are today. We have zero tolerance for abuse, harassment, or discrimination of any kind. Yeah, he was racist. He uh, says, F, you know, fat kids, the non-popular kid. You know, he's a total soji, okay? What do they say in the comments? There's probably a shitload of, like, um, what's going on with his face? Yeah, his face is monstrous. It's been that way. I'm boycotting this brand. Well, I've never bought this brand. Now look at Victoria's Secret. Didn't we already look at Victoria's Secret? I know that I touched on that, but I don't... Another pathetic predatory man in power. I hope he rots in prison. He's only gonna... If he went to prison, he'd only be in there for a little while. Isn't this store that used to attract topless male models for their staff? Probably. Gary Busey could definitely plant. No. Gary Busey is buddies with the other human traffickers. So, no, no. That, I mean, he, they're, they're playing what? 
Now, I'd be curious if this guy was friends with Nygaard. I mean, there's a lot of these fashion guys. Uh, they just would agree with each other. Oh, here we go. I was an assistant manager decades ago when ANF was in its prime in 2002. We were informed two months ahead of time that Mike would be coming for walkthrough. And I was instructed to go out and find young people who look like ANF models to hire for um, that one day. Everything in the store was repainted, spruced up. We boarded, folded, stacked up t-shirts and hid them in locked dressing rooms so they would be ready to be pulled out before they came in. I put in 60 to 70 hours per week for those two months. No overtime salary, and it was insane. Then during the walkthrough, he kept putting his hands all over me. Extremely uncomfortable situation to be in, and I was surprised because I am a female... And I was a well-known secret. It was a well-known secret within the company that even though he was long married to a woman, he had a male toy boy who he kept at an apartment in New York City and gave off very strong vibes that he that was his preference. And I only lasted six months on that job. Yes. So I just pulled out a story from two, 2006 that he, in fact, did that stuff, right? He was grabbing everybody. Yes. So I'm going to copy you, and I believe your story. So... Uh, Mr. Jeffrey surgeon should be arrested immediately. <laughs> oh, those veneers are a crime. I told you they wanted me to get veneers like that. My teeth are totally perfect. I was like, I'm not looking like monster chomp here. I, that thing is a no, no. Unless my teeth were all falling out and it's like a must. Um, so we do have another victim in there. Not shocking. He's known for a scumbag. His identity crisis was early in the 2000s. He thinks he's some 22-year-old new college grad and preys on young men and women. He, uh, yeah, he has no preference. Like, uh, yeah, because if you see a guy starting to rape some guys, um, that means that they would rape anybody, technically. I mean, they wouldn't be above it, right? So, but there was already stories that were out and they, they brushed it off as paternal. Ask that girl if it was paternal. She just said it was not. Although these awful allegations, I'm glad the abuse men is being highlighted too. Although more young women are abused, men's experience should be exposed too. Terry Cruz was one of the first to speak out about his experience, and they definitely need to do so because they don't deserve it either. All abuse is wrong, even more so when it is an abuse of power, and the age difference between these men and young, these men and young men is shocking. Is there anyone decent in this world? No, fuck no. Mm -mm. Told you they're all shit, and I get targeted for uh, saying anything negative about men. <laughs> I was like. But that's the truth. That's how they are. It says, it, I mean, it, it seems to me that a quite a lot of people who come into money end up exploiting people. Yeah, okay, so how would you come into money, right? So the sociopath male supremacist, right, they own the everything, right? So in order to get there, you must actually join that cult of men. And what do they do? They exploit people, right? They kill people. They control people. And you're not human, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't have this system where, like, the worth on my body, you know what I mean? The whole capitalist thing. Everything about it is pretty fucked up. And so, no, he's, you would have to be a total sociopath in order to get to that level. That's it. They try to make excuses that they just work so hard, you know, over other people. But the truth is, as you're seeing, they're actually trampling us down. So even if I'm trying really hard for my own career, they come in and they mowed it down. They mowed it the fuck down. So that's not my fault. So they want to come after me because we're talking about the abuse of power from the celebrities the whole time and by government because they actually agree with this conduct. Because if they didn't like this conduct, they would have arrested him in like 2006, right? Or right prior to that, they were promoting child exploitation. And it was true. They weren't being prude there. I was just like reading it going, ew. I don't rem I was not into this guy's brand, so I wouldn't know who the fuck he is for the life of me. Mm, and I wouldn't have read their private thing anyway. It's like I buy, if I buy clothes, I don't give a shit like 
you know, y'all don't typically go look at their background and go, who's this guy personally? Um, you know, unless I wanted to do something with the company, then in which case, then I would find out. Um, uh, this guy's a, no, he was a piece of shit when they were interviewing him. The Netflix documentary on that store is incredibly interesting. Well, I don't know what's in that, but, um, disgusting, but it doesn't surprise me. Powerful people have powerful friends. Um, they have criminal friends. I would put it that way. They have criminal friends. I'm blinded by his teeth. Let me see. I was I was horrified by his face. I was like, where is he? <laughs> no. Um, uh, he looks like, you know, from Beauty and the Beast, right? The Beast. The one that they're like, you will learn to love this ugly man. That's the guy right there. The ogre. The hideous monster that's like, you will learn to love me, men and women. You will learn to love me, because inside, I'm a fucking rapist. Yeah, that dude. Oh, man, the dude below him. It's just like, that's a prey, right? Prey. It's like, you're a beautiful boy. I'm going to destroy you, right? Right? The destroyer. The, the socio has to destroy beauty, right? That thing. And then turn him into, like, narcissists. Like, I hope these guys, I don't know, but let me hear it. One of them's talking, right? Okay, let me see something. Let me play. But I got a while video. Starting out in the entertainment industry. But while starting out in the entertainment industry, I did fall victim to a handful of situations that were inappropriate. It was kind of reinforced, kind of over and over again, that this is normal. And so the idea of this isn't the way things are done wasn't really occurring. Jim made it clear to me that unless I let him perform oral sex on me, that I would not be meeting with Abercrombie Fitch or Mike Jeffries. That's David. That was David Bradley. I was presented with meeting the CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch for a sex party, uh, a sexual experience. There was never any real clarity about what was expected of me to have. It was just like, you can go there and do what you feel comfortable with and let it be known in a roundabout way that like the farther you go, the better. I know that my friend was making money because he told me it was you get this and I get this. It's a win win for both of us. OK, so I'm very well, I'm well aware this was going on, like as far as like in the gay like the gay community like they always talked about this and i said that that other guy was like a sex worker or something and but it was with a woman or something but i don't there was some like underbelly here that was going on to where that's what they did and people like elton john and all them wanted to cover that that universe up and then strangely enough milo was like outing some of that conduct it was this weird thing and he's like totally coming after women i'm like do do not even um but no there was actually this weird thing and i said when they the, that the predators like took me into north hollywood i go i said there's this universe of the gay men right because they were dealing with the the magazine all that stuff and so these were the people and it was sort of like well i'm a victim in it so i'm not thinking at the time like not not in the proper way of the situation obviously like like these guys here right where you're like in a situation and it's sort of shelved differently like um but i'm a minor so they were not minors but when you go into the earlier story in the 2006 thing where he's talking it definitely sounds like minors would definitely be involved in this story and that he was molesting everybody I was like, what the hell? Um, so hopefully, because the story now is new and it comes out, that now more people will go, oh, yeah, now I'll come out and talk, right? So this is the new one. So we'll keep following it. We're following it. And that's all I can say about it right at this minute. Yeah, no. In fact, Elton John has a long, bad history. And all those guys have been covering up this stuff. Like I said, even with the Paul Rubin stuff, I go, no. 
just because you're gay doesn't mean you get away with doing this crap to other people so they've been harming people in their community it doesn't it doesn't just it doesn't it doesn't matter like who they are it, it, any whatever your sexual preference is these guys have been harming everybody and as you see they harm other women too in the story so it isn't it isn't like one group specific really but you know some of the trafficking portions are you know on these younger boys so yeah there could be some further um things with minors since a lot of them didn't care about age because if you don't if you don't care about any of this stuff then you definitely wouldn't care about age um you're just looking for you you think you're rich and you can do whatever the hell you want and you're a man right mostly if you're a white man just generally they think they could do whatever they want and they've been getting away with it and the laws have been promoting them to do that to us all right but it it my thing with the with the socio thing i go the victims need to know that they were a victim because if they're running around going this is all cool then no one gets taken down right okay this story kind of took a turn so here's another story that was in the sun actually and it's probably elsewhere and i just really quickly pulled something up so last year they did this thing in the sun and it says they call it amber crumble and it says inside the dark world of um, ANF with misogynist CEO Mike links to Epstein and the racist shirts, right? So during this, okay, minus all the racist garbage, um, he had these people who got involved with them, okay? Uh, Taylor Swift. Um, I don't know how old she was when she did that, but Jennifer Lawrence and Ashton Kutcher put their faces on ad campaigns for the brand, even though they were targeting little kids, you know, because the crash in the mid to 2010s, right? It made claims of sexist, racist, racist, and predatory behavior in the firm, right? Ashton's face would automatically be here. But the end part of this story, which is a big one, I think, um, says this. Says this. Jeffries quit in 2014 and refused to comment to Netflix because somebody brought up the movie thing and I was like, what is it? And I pull it up and then Ashton's creepy ass face was on it. And it says, L. Branch chair Les Wexler resigned in 2020 over misogyny claims and his friendship with pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, now we're seeing the bigger picture of this, right? It's not just a Jeffrey Epstein thing. They're just all into doing this. That's what I'm saying. I go, I don't even think like you would even need to have that connection. It's just all these rich businessmen did this. They did this. It's not uh, Jeffrey Epstein running this mass like thing and everybody's like kneeling down to him and they're all doing this against their will. Like, come on. This was like the universe that all rich men, all white men actually from birth, wanted to grow up and become this really rich guy so they can get a whole stable of people to abuse, sexually abuse and do whatever, right? That's the universe. That's the shit. I go, how come I'm around all these people and they're targeting me all over the place and they're all like millionaires and shit? Yeah, they were doing that. And it would come with the price, right? They wouldn't help me. They were sitting there going, why would I help you? Um, unless you do something for me. That's shit, right? Okay, so let me... I'm going to take one more look at something. Oh, wait. Somebody that's claiming that they're against human trafficking, mostly like Ashton Kutcher. He's the biggest fucking hypocrite ever. And he's doing shit for other human traffickers. That's awesome. That's fucking way awesome. I told you he did it to cover his buddies. I told you. I know better. I know better. I know better because I know who's doing it, at least in the circle of people that I had to deal with. And I'm watching people do it and I'm like, nope, that's exactly what they're doing. Okay, so, and there's not going to be any white dudes that are like, oh, you know, we need to stop raping all these women and, you know, I'm not against raping women, you know, it's like, uh, I told you that anti-human trafficking thing didn't add don't human traffic boys. So does Ashton have something to tell us about that? Because there was a hidden message there. At least that's how I took it. Did anybody else? Because that's what I saw.
It was like, don't, don't go buy any women. You guys got to go buy some boys. And I was like, oh, this comes together well in this story. So, oh, uh, yeah. Ashen's being cuddled by a whole bunch of men. Uh, yeah. That's the shit. They wanted all the boys. They're like, knock women off the planet. We just want a bunch of boys to rape. Yeah, exactly. Is that, <laughs> is that Ashton on this thing? Where they're all like... Yeah, uh-huh. The secret society of men raping each other. Yeah. And little boys. 